मुझसे सुंदर सपनों से प्यारा है अपना घर जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वही आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन मी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू बोला आई वो मे ज्वाइन मी एवरी वीक डे फ्रॉम नाइन एम टू टू पी एम ऑन द सेंटर शो विद क्लासिक हिट्स फ्रॉम द सेवेंटीज एज वेल एज दीज राइट हियर ऑन गोल्ड एफ एम Tonight, International Monetary Fund says at 9% unemployment is high in Fiji. Nasese buses fleet grounded until a safety order gives the all clear. And police step up operations in the lead up to hibiscus and the school holidays. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. The International Monetary Fund says there's an urgent need for faster and deeper structural reforms for the Fijian economy to achieve higher growth and reduce unemployment. This was the analysis of an IMF team that says domestic political uncertainty is also a risk. Mika Longa reports. The International Monetary Fund team dissected the Fijian economy and found that at nearly 9%, unemployment is stubborn high. We believe it is imperative to have Uh, to increase the business investment and the business investment increases the say uh, absorptive capacity of the economy like increases the uh, uh, jobs and uh, adds to the capital stock of the economy the IMF team said that if Fiji wants to sustainably raise economic growth and reduce poverty it needs key policy changes in its system to boost investments unless Fiji increases the absorptive capacity in the economy by going ahead with the uh, structural reform and uh, uh, to improve the business uh, confidence to have more investment, then the increased demand uh, is very much constrained by the supply side uh, bottlenecks. The IMF projects the economy to grow to around 3% this year and two and a quarter percent in 2014. The Fiji's economy has picked up from the, uh, the low growth of the previous years and now it's growing uh, robustly. Uh, and, but you know, this is no time for complacency. So I, I keep on saying Fiji is doing well, but Fiji can do better. Uh, but in order to do better, you need to address these uh, supply bottlenecks. The IMF team met Fijian Prime Minister Vorangen Badmarama and other stakeholders during their visit. Mikolonga, FBC News. The government will issue a statement in relation to the IMF comments tomorrow. The Nasese buses fleet has been grounded indefinitely in light of the recent spate of fires involving the company. And as Roland Karoy reports, there are also allegations that the company tried sabotaging the e-ticketing process by tampering with some machines. The decision to ground Nasese buses was made following a meeting between the LTA and the Transport Ministry. You know, it's really unfortunate that uh, we have to take uh, this uh, step, but like I said, we have to do it uh, on the best interest of uh, the travelling uh, public and the passengers. They have been uh, grounded to ensure that uh, we have an independent opinion. Uh, from uh, the relevant authorities, technical people, to ascertain the causes of these fires on, from this particular bus company. The Fiji Bus Operators Association agrees with the decision, saying it's for public safety. Well, no, we've uh, had a meeting with LTA, uh, made a decision that, uh, to ground his buses. We've uh, pleaded to LTA to reconsider the decision. Unfortunately, uh, you know, something has to be done. And Nasese bus owners have blamed the e-ticketing consoles and wiring for the bus fires. That's a bad excuse eh? because uh, uh, e-ticketing machines are in 980 buses now and uh, those buses don't catch fire. The last Nasese bus fire, we got the blame. It was e-ticketing console. There was no console installed. Then it was, oh no, there's no console but there's wires. When we did the inspection, there was no wires. Yesterday's bus fire has been reported to police with claims there were some elements of sabotage. We also saw near the battery compartment, uh, under the wheel, there was actually a burnt wire. 
Now this wire is not our wire, our wire actually came directly from the fuse box. Now the interesting thing is when we actually came back again now to do a joint inspection with Necessi, uh, someone had actually opened the bus and to our surprise we actually can now see that the burnt wire that was near the battery compartment and near the wheel has now been removed. Attempts to get a comment from the bus company have been unsuccessful but all their buses are now in the depot behind me where they will remain until a full audit of the fleet by the LTA. The FBOA has activated its contingency plan to ensure there are no disruptions to bus services. Roland Kuroi, FBC News. The late Tuim Bambulu Ratusai Rusi Nanganga Voka was laid to rest at the chiefly burial ground at Sorokamba village in Ba today. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama and political leaders were among those who came to pay their last respects to a chief who believed in racial harmony and sharing land use. Wasita Kotewasawasa reports. The late Ratusai Rusi was born in August 1921. His personality meant people were able to relate to him and race was no barrier. Ratu Seirusi, as a parliamentarian, believed in equal rights for all. Never did he segregate the different races living in Ma and always led by example. To prove this, he allocated 16 acres of his land to the displaced cave farmers. The love and respect he cared for his people, including non-indigenous people, was a special quality and benefit with his great chief. The late chief's colleagues Uncle spoke of a man of great caliber. We are gathered here this morning not so much to mourn, but to celebrate the life of an exemplary person, a leader, high chief, a man who inspired and led, not through fear and force, but through his ultimate humility, his humanity, and the quiet strength of his personality. For the hundreds who came to Sorokomba, there was a sense of loss for a leader, a person who took time out to care for those around him. The Tuimba is survived by his wife, Bulosumu Tananganga Voka, and eight children. Wasita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. The Lombasa economy received a huge boost thanks to a major football event hosted at Subrail Park last weekend. As Ritika Pratap reports, the trickle-down effect is still being felt in the northern town. The tournament injected life into the usually sleepy town. Businesses on all levels benefited. Not only have myself uh, hairdressing, but all the hotel business, the restaurant, the transport business. I think everybody have made money. I don't think anybody can say that uh, BOG was a failure and the business really boom in Lambasa. With close to 8,000 people flocking to Lambasa last week, some business people even managed to stay open on Sunday, raking in as much profit as possible. Yeah, it's really very busy on Sunday. Normally we are not busy on Sunday, but uh, last weekend is very busy. Seeing how the town comes alive during sporting events, some retailers say Lambasa should get more chances to host tournaments. Like BOG has happened, they should uh, consider this very seriously because the business and everything was very good. And we look forward to have more events like this. Crushing season is usually the peak time for shopping and businesses. But with the opening of bauxite mining, things are looking better. The Lambasa Chamber of Commerce says the government's look north policy is also working with more investments seen on the ground. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Stolen bus fare vouchers found circulating in the system. That's after the break. Isambul Vinaka, Pedango Wadi Sun in the Lai, Namakuman was in Novorotaki and Lali Nekabi, Minatolu Kinabitu, and a morning digging a porombuka, and Ambula FM, Nabandu and a serre. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are, a bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up?
Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. A man is under arrest in Baia's police investigate the stabbing of a teacher at a school. The woman was allegedly attacked after she refused to see the man yesterday afternoon. It's alleged the suspect from Suva had threatened the teacher in the past. The violent attack took place on school premises after the day's classes had ended. The teacher was treated for injuries and sent home. The police force has stepped up operations as Fiji approaches a busy period from this weekend. With the second term school holidays and the beginning of major events, police patrols will be more visible. Shireen Lata reports. The Hibiscus Festival and major sporting events will keep policemen and women pretty busy for the next week or two. Those planning on taking advantage of this busy period have been warned to think twice. Uh, if you are trying to uh, going to commit any offence during this week, uh, you better think otherwise that the police will uh, be there uh, in front of all the streets in Suva to ensure that the Hibiscus is uh, incident free. A special meeting was called this afternoon with nightclub owners and bouncers from around Suva, urging safety of patrons. Our customers are those that bring money into the various nightclub. And what can we do in return? Eh? I think it is us here. We cannot deny that our duty is to look after them. Police have extended their operations to monitor gaming centers and patrol the streets. We'll be uh, targeting all the night, uh, nightclubs and also the uh, um, internet cafe or where most of these uh, uh, children uh, will be uh, likely to be in during the odd hours. Parents and guardians are also urged to know the whereabouts of their children during this busy period. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Stolen bus fare vouchers are in circulation. Tadirua Transport has confirmed receiving some of these vouchers after being asked by the Education Ministry to keep a lookout. Api Salamedoka reports. Tadirua Transport in Tamabua Suva is keeping an eye on all the bus fare vouchers they receive. On Tuesday, we received a complaint from the Education Department that certain amount of vouchers has been stolen from the AV school and uh, we to keep a watch on that. Ajit Singh says they found some of the stolen vouchers when counting the day's takings from bus drivers. The numbers were given to us uh, from the Education Department, uh, the books numbers. So that is how we identified that these are the stolen ones. Singh adds all drivers have been told to be careful when accepting vouchers from students in the Greater Suva area. It is on and uh, we'll uh, try to assist the Education Department finding where it's coming from. It's unclear how the vouchers went missing from DAV Boys College in Nambua. Permanent Secretary of Education Dr. Bridge Lal this afternoon told FBC News he isn't aware of the issue. Apisolome Dhoka, FBC News. Two brothers from Nasino are pushing their way into the music and entertainment industry and will soon be seen on FBC TV. Mikalonga paid them a visit to see how they've been silently using their talents over the years. Chikeli and Choweli, twins living on the outskirts of Nandera in Nasinu. While they are aspiring musicians, the Tukai Silva brothers are also good comedians, a technique they came up with themselves. We were so blessed when God blessed them with this beautiful gift they have. Gift of singing and gift of uh, this blessing. But the Lord has blessed upon them, especially this mime, uh, this miming actions. I'm really proud of this mother. God will provide them for their uh, future, which is ahead of them through the talents they have. The family has strong Christian beliefs, and the talents of these twins are used in almost every evangelism work in the Nandera community. <laughs> Our parents are involved in church work. That's gotten into our blood, and that's where we learned music and to sing. <laughs> the Tukai Suva brothers feel they are ready to move into the entertainment industry, something they've never taken seriously until today. I'm ready to perform what we were raised with in public. I have learned and believe that this God-given talent will lead me to a better life themselves the Miming Brothers and you can watch their first show on Popcorn TV this Sunday. Mikalonga, FBC News.
Fiji Broadcasting Corporation announced last night that they are the number one viewed television and have the top radio stations. This was revealed to the company's major clients last night while acknowledging their loyalty at a small meet and greet. FBC Chief Executive Riaz Said Kayum says this was done to thank their partners in achieving the rankings. If we had not entered the market and made such an impact, an incredible impact in less than two years, which has led to our TV and radio competitors making major changes to play catch up with our number one position. But we believe the biggest secret to our success has been our ability to quickly establish FBC as the people's TV station. FBC also announced that there are new local shows to look forward to. And Jamie is here with the latest in sports and I hear that football fever will be hitting bar from tomorrow. Bullseye Daki, the soccer crazy town of Bar, gets set to host the second round of the BOG and para sport athletes hoping to make it big in the mini games. Stay with us. Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, i got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach mock-off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The second round of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants kicks off at Bar's Govind Park in less than 24 hours. With just the final round, with just the final round of pool play remaining and only one confirmed semi-finalist, Fiji Football says fans are in for some exciting soccer. Shelvin Chan reports. It will be soccer fever in a town renowned for its die-hard love for the game. But the last time a tournament was held in Bar, things went a bit ugly. Fiji FA believes it won't be a repeat of last year's IDC. Accept the referee's decision. The referee has the final say. Um, they did very well in Lambasa. Nobody argued with the referee. They accepted the decision. Because once the referee makes the decision, he will not change. So there's no use arguing with Accept it. Play game with the intention of fair play. Only overseas base players with work permits will be allowed onto the pitch. So far, there have been no additional permits received. Those that we approved last week stands. There has been no addition to that. Although I have told the Rewa I was trying to get a Lakas permit and uh, some, uh, somebody else, but uh, nothing has come in so far. Govin Park is in top shape, all ready for teams to run on and start playing. By our workmen at the Govin Park have been preparing, working day and night to make sure that everything is ready. The teams <coughs> will start arriving in today. The Premier Division teams of Raketi and Goa are already in Bar. The other teams will be arriving there today with the tournament starts early tomorrow morning. So far, Bar is the only team to qualify for the semi-finals. An interesting day awaits for football fans as most teams are locked in a do-or-die situation. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. Referees director Paresh Kishore says game control of the first round of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants was very impressive. But referees also expect players to play in line with FIFA's fair play motto when the BOG resumes tomorrow. I'm happy that, uh, that my referees they have uh, interpreted and applied the laws of the game quite uh, well. And uh, the momentum we are going to carry on from tomorrow. And uh, as I've said before, we are going to... Be, uh, I mean, uh, we want the players to abide by the laws of the game. And if they take laws in their hand, actions will be taken. That, uh, that is what I have instructed my, my referees, and that is what they are going to do. Four teams remain in the Vodafone Cup Rugby League competition. Having survived grueling yet thoroughly entertaining games in the quarterfinals last weekend, these teams now face another round of hard-hitting rugby. Talent Daudakadaka reports. Once again, quickly, Tanya... The Nambua Broncos are back in amongst the top ranks after ousting the Polish Sharks last weekend in a thrilling encounter. The side prides itself on its solid defense to withstand the challenges from bigger teams. For its next assault in the semis, they will go back to executing the basics well. 
keeping the ball and finish out the set of six and just completing that, completing our six and hopefully giving a good uh, kick, kick down to, to the um, field and winning the field position. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Sambeto Roosters will feature in an epic repeat of last year's grand final where they came up short against the eventual champions, the Mokoi Bulldogs. The Nandi based side is under no illusions as to the challenge that lies ahead of them. With the, with the playing with the Mokoi Bulldogs uh, will be a, a good game, as I mentioned. It will be a thriller because uh, for them, the advantage for them is that uh, they have uh, more game time than us. They played the elimination, the quarter last week and the semi this week, and also eight of, them, of the players are playing uh, in the elite squad to the World Cup this year. Churchill Park in Lotoka will be the battleground for these four teams on Saturday. Talent of the FBC Sports. Another Fijian is making a name for himself in the local English 7th circuit and could soon be joining flying Fijians Akapu Singera and Apolosi Satala in the higher ranks of European giant Gloucester. 19-year-old Andrew Mbulumakao has been a mainstay of the Gloucester Rugby 7th club this season alongside his Fijian compatriots. The trio led Gloucester to victory over Leicester in the final of the J.P. Morgan 7th tournament this week. Bulu Macau is hoping to gain a place in the Gloucester Academy, which trains its players with a view to the Premiership side for the Heineken Cup Championship. The athletic squad to the Pacific Mini Games will feature three athletes competing in the Paralympic category. The three have been training under the guidance of Freddy Fatiaki, who also coaches Ilya Sandelana. They too will be using the mini games as a building block for the ultimate goal of competing at the Paralympics. Shelvin Chan has more. A sprinter, a shot put thrower, and a javelin thrower are hoping to make their mark in the Pacific mini games and follow in the footsteps of Ilias and Delana. Uh, all I want from them is to do their best and uh, work on their PB, and only time will tell what's going to happen uh, during competition time. Fred Fatiaki is happy with the way his team has been training. He's even confident that the trio can make the team with Ilias and Delana to the next Paralympics. Uh, this will be a stepping stone for the next years to come, uh, especially preparing for the Pacific Games in uh, PNG, uh, where power sports are also included in uh, the Games. As for the able bodied athletes, there's no doubt in their minds non performance is unacceptable. It's uh, been a privilege to be part of Team Fiji, and uh, I'm very excited. Uh, Although my performance in the Kokolo Games wasn't very well because of the injury I had, but uh, I'm hoping to bring back goal for Fiji. Athletics is sending a 25-member team to the mini games, and the coaches are confident of a good medal haul in Wallis and Futuna. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now for business. <laughs> The United States Embassy in Fiji is helping eight women who've been running small businesses in their communities. It's brought in Samira Gaines from the National Community Reinvestment Coalition to help the women who live around G2 Estate in Rewanga. These women are able to meet their daily expenses and Gaines says she wants to broaden their mind to grow their business. The other challenge that I see that a lot of women face is fear. Just plain and simple scared. Um, and addressing fear right from the beginning is something that we do at the DC Women's Business Center and something that I think um, is an important element to attack from the very beginning. Training ended late this afternoon. Vodafone today launched a new service to help address youth social problems. The platform will be manned by a group of professional youth to help engage and develop their peers. Vodafone executive Ambalika Kuti says the new service will discuss solutions to problems faced by youth today. If we all put our heads together, because our youths, they already have the knowledge, the skill and the passion. All they need is a platform where they can come together, share and also um, uh, air out their, whatever their concerns are and be able to develop solutions and share with the rest of the populace, the youth population. Eh? There are costs related to the use of the M Youth platform. Time for weather now, and I love the red coat, Jen. 
Well, Jackie, considering all this rain and cloudiness in Suva, I really needed a dash of colour. The North also didn't get much, if any, sunshine today. And it was a totally different story for the West. They got to enjoy some lovely sunny weather. It was the perfect day to stay in bed, if you live in Savu Savu or the capital. Elsewhere, it wasn't that cold. The lowest temperature was 27 degrees and the highest was 31 in Ba and the Jet Set Town. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Speaking of Ba, the home of the Men in Black will have lots of sun tomorrow. So, soccer fans, you'll be able to enjoy good football without worrying about the weather. There will also be generally fine conditions with just a few clouds in some centres. And before I go, here's an awesome shot from Noshad Ali. He took this today at the famous Nasese Seawall. And I'm thinking, fish and chips there this Saturday, Jackie. Sounds like a plan, Jin. <laughs> the top stories tonight. The International Monetary Fund says Fiji needs urgent reforms to kick economic growth and reduce unemployment. Nasese buses fleet grounded until the LTA conducts a safety audit and police beef up patrols during hibiscus. This week's poll question and we're asking, who should be held responsible for the latest rugby protests? FRU, unions or teachers? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's news tonight. Until tomorrow, good night. सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला न लोगों की परवाह न दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Nibula, methango nimilote na isarotumboa. Nama kia uminarua kinaona na vya kavi muniti kina vaka rambuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vipoka barota kinin reko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya uniano. Ngai nama kia ukina.